Welcome to chapter 2, Aerodrome. In this chapter, we will look at how NavBlue present their aerodrome information on their chart, along with any significant differences to the Jefferson charts. Here we have a 10-1 aerodrome page for Jakarta. We will now go through the layout of the aerodrome chart. At the top will be the communications area showing the relevant call sign and frequencies. Below that is the aerodrome data area and the chart area. Runway information and lighting is presented here along with the takeoff minima. Communication services will be placed in the following order. Hours of service will be published next to the frequency if different from the aerodrome hours. Primary and secondary to be presented as shown. Aerodrome data area contains information such as the aerodrome elevation as published in the AIP in feet. The coordinates of the official aerodrome reference point to be presented as decimals of a minute. Rescue and firefighting category as published in the AIP. If no indication in the AIP or published as unknown, then no indication will be shown. For countries applying FAA standard, State the airport index. Airdrome operating hours. If space is a problem, the information will be shown below the runway and lighting table. Here is an aerodrome chart area. Please familiarise yourself with the symbols and how NavBlue present them. Threshold coordinates shown here. If displaced threshold are used, these will be presented. Aerodrome charts are drawn to scale with a graticule and a scale bar showing metres and feet. Coastlines, lakes and rivers to be also shown. The runway and lighting table. Runway designators will be shown in pairs, starting with the lowest runway. The runway slope will have a plus or minus to distinguish between up or down runway slope. Plus for uphill and minus for downhill. Approach lighting system showing highest intensity, high, medium or low, followed by a reference code letter related to the approach lighting configuration. If detail is not published, the abbreviation available AVBL will be inserted. Here are some examples of ICAO and FAA approach lighting reference codes and how they would be presented on the chart. Please familiarise yourself with the different lighting. Here is the FAA approach lighting.
when the approach light length is shorter than 720 meters, the actual length will be stated with a black ball note. Black ball notes will be used for any additional approach lighting information if it deviates from the ICAO standard. If the runway centerline lighting is not available on any runway, then this column will not be shown. Any additional lighting such as Pappies or Vasis will be shown here with the angle and the minimum eye height above threshold. Additional lighting will be on the left unless mentioned. The next few slides will familiarise yourself with now blue depictions of aeronautical information. Some of this information, such as the intersection Tora, may not be presented on a 10-1 if a 10-2 overview chart is present. Here are some examples of the different types of runways and how they will be presented on the chart. Takeoff values are determined using the runway center line lighting, runway edge lighting, the transmissometers, and if CAT3 navigation aids are available. The lighting on the runway has to meet specific intensities and spacing set out by the regulatory body. For an aerodrome to have the best possible takeoff available, there must be a CAT3 navigation aid present. Before Minima can publish low visibility takeoff, LVTO values, the state have to give permission that the aerodrome can carry out such procedures. This is normally stated in the aerodrome section. In this slide, you'll see the key differences between NavBlue and Jefferson's aerodrome charts.